Okay, everyone, back to weekly weather updates. And this evening, we're going to be having a look at the current situation in America with uh, winter storm Viola, uh, with the polar vortex, which has been impacting many areas of America. At the end of the video, we'll have a brief look at the UK uh, GFS ensembles and the UK radar. Not a lot has changed for the UK, so I didn't really, it didn't really warrant uh, a full video. Remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you do like and subscribe, as it does really help me out. Now, currently, we're having a look at the uh, GFS run for North America, and you can see the very dark blues. It was colder than this uh, a couple of days ago, but by the surface, it's still brutally cold for quite wide areas of the United States, and you can see the remnants of that portion of the polar vortex which had splintered into America. Uh, you can see the sort of the remainder of uh, winter storm Uri, which is affecting sort of Newfoundland area uh, and getting across, uh, and will be soon heading off into the Atlantic, probably heading towards the UK. Won't be a winter storm then, um, but it will be uh, uh, pulled, pulled on by the jet stream, potentially impacting us uh, uh, later this week. But you can see what it has done on its back edge is it's dropped a lot more cold air into more eastern coastal areas as tropical uh, sorry winter storm yuri did travel not but its center was inland so many areas across the eastern coastal areas new york washington dc philadelphia boston saw rain um but this cold air has seeped a bit further southwards and eastwards um especially for the eastern side of the uk uh, of the united states and it means this next winter storm forming will um, we'll be bringing quite a lot of snow even to coastal areas, as well as topping up maybe three to six inches more of snow for areas that saw ten, 10 to 15 inches of snow from the previous winter storm. But where we've got this collision of brutally cold air and warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, um, that's where we've got this uh, winter storm Viola brewing. And you can see as we head through, it does spin up. Um, it doesn't show too much on the um, 850 HPA temperatures, but it's, it's in this dividing line here. And if we go into the pressure charts, you can see it's this little feature here. Now, in America, the storms on synoptic patterns don't look that uh, amazing. You'd, you'd argue that doesn't really look like a, a big winter storm, but because it's fueled by such warm air from the south, the impacts of it is pretty severe. Uh, they don't see the massive jet stream um, whipped up storms the UK sees, as those uh, storms in the UK are um, fueled by the contrast between some colder air coming from the north and some milder air. But this storm is fueled by bitterly cold air against very warm, moist air. So even though it's not a deep air of low pressure, um, it does have severe impacts with heavy rain and strong winds as well. And you can see it does develop off the coast as it gets picked up by the jet stream uh, towards Saturday, heading towards the UK. But it's going to have some very severe impacts with this. And it's going to have, again, potentially 10 to 15 inches of snow perhaps further southwards and eastwards than the last track. But overall, it's a very similar sort of south, uh, west, northeast track um, uh, of, the, of the previous storm, Uri. So yeah, if we have a look at the a HVA temperatures, you can see bitterly cold air digs in behind it, but it does look like milder air will be spreading in once this colder air moves away. And then most of the country looks to be going back generally uh, mild. Um, and if we have a look at the temperature deviations, if we pull it back, uh, you can see bitterly cold air at the moment. And you see, yes, uh, the temperature deviation is still lower than normal, but it's not brutally cold, um, and it's not going to be cold enough for widespread snowfall. That's uh, that's for definite. Um, we'll be brewing up a massive winter storm um, with the brutally cold air confined back to Canada. So now if we have a look at the latest precipitation uh, charts from the Weather Channel, you can see this big clump of snow, uh, sleet, freezing rain, and heavy rain. And you can see being fueled by the Gulf of Mexico, these thunderstorms towards the south, and then heavy, heavy snow, like three, four inches per hour snowfall rates. It does move through quite quickly, this storm, but it's going to be heading up towards Washington, D.C., New York, and then out into sort of Newfoundland again. And you can see where you do get hit by that, you can be some 
torrential snow and torrential freezing rain with that. So you see, these dark reds are turning into snow, which is uh, it was obscene amounts, it's whiteout conditions. Um, again, won't last for a uh, huge amount of time. It's not a classic sort of nor'easter storm where they do stall a little bit um, on the east coast, but it is a um, again a very significant storm that if you are pretty much just a little bit north of that freezing rain line that's where the heaviest snow is going to be as you can see sort of minden uh, that's town there is seeing some brutally heavy snow at the moment and then you can see a bit of mixing sleet snow and it will be quite a messy picture especially on the southern extent of this where colder air undercuts it and you see some freezing rain maybe snow in some areas will, will be seeing some very weird uh, wacky weather from it being raining one minute to heavy snow um, back to freezing rain or sleet so and that dividing line could be some very interesting and dangerous conditions with that uh, heavy heavy uh, freezing rain with that as well now if we have a look at the past precipitation this is for the past snowfall amounts you can see a lot of snow out towards uh, sort of the Midwest, Northwest, um, and that's where the storms have uh, been tracking. So that's where the storms track. And as it comes to the Gulf of Mexico, it picks up moisture. You can see heavy snow quite widely, not as much for the South Coast uh, as as a previous storm, but that is previous storm has exceptional amounts of snow for for the south for southern counties of uh, Texas and Louisiana. Um, but the milder air is already. Um, picking up there as you saw in the previous chart and you can see already heavy snow amounts and then you can see the remnants of storm uh, winter storm Yuri you can see um, huge amounts of snow over Newfoundland uh, and you can see where it is currently and it's moving through and it will be heading towards the UK not as a winter storm though but you can see that's where its general track will be through like Ohio, New York um, through North Carolina Kentucky Virginia getting towards northeastern states uh, after that. Now if we have a look at the, uh, this is the future 48 hour snowfall amount, you can see where the, sn uh, the storm is right now and it's going to be heading northeastwards and where you see that when you're on that dividing line from freezing rain to snow that's where you can see very very significant totals. Widespread sort of three four inches of snow, um, uh, maybe five six inches and then within you that sort of bullseye line uh, you could see maybe 10 plus inches of snow including parts of Washington DC New York Philadelphia um, into Boston as well a bit further inland um, heavy snow not as much but the bullseye of the last storm was more through like Ohio Indiana Kentucky sort of area so uh, even though they only have only going to see maybe four or five six inches from this it's quite likely that they already have maybe 10 inches on the ground at the moment so some areas going to see some big snow totals and I saw an interesting fact yesterday that um, uh, 73% of the United States had snow cover yesterday, which is a record uh, highest amount. They've only been taking data for about 15 years um, regards to that, but it just shows you how exceptionally widespread the cold is uh, and the snow as well. Now finally, if we have a look at the uh, GFS Ensembles for London, we'll have a quick brief look at what the UK's outlook is. And you can see it's not really changed too much from yesterday. There's still a lot of uncertainty on the longer range. Shorter range, still above average generally, but it's going to be quite unsettled. That high pressure is not doesn't look like at the moment it's going to be building for most of the country. So you see, especially in London, we do have a couple drier interludes, and perhaps then it could maybe get up to the mid to high teens, potentially in a few locations if we do see some sunshine. But it still does look generally quite uncertain. Does look like the Atlantic will win out against uh, the higher pressure. But you can see, towards the longer term, there are some very cold ensemble members, and including the latest operational run, um, going out to 5th of March, going down to minus 10 at 850 HPA. So you can't rule out a bitterly cold spell at the start of March, end of February. But at the moment, looking at the longer term patterns it does look like at the moment with the polar vortex recovered uh, and that's heading through the atmosphere uh, the just stratospheric polar vortex i mean there uh, it does definitely look like westerly momentum is is very much at the highest it's been all winter um so i do suspect that the westerlies 
overall will probably win out. So at this stage, I would say the chance of it turning cold again is maybe only 10 or 20%. I think a couple of days ago I said 30%, but I think I'll downgrade it to maybe 10 or 20%. It's looking more and more unlikely uh, as we head through. You can't, again, you can't rule it out as we've had quite a, a decent uh, winter for blocking, but at this stage it definitely looks like it's going to be quite mild, but again, quite wet and windy. Um, for the foreseeable future, again, with a few card outliers, but nothing really comes to fruition at the moment. If we have a current look at the, if we have a look at the current radar uh, for England, uh, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland, if we just zoom out, just pull it back a frame, there we go, you can see some, quite a lot of heavy rain. It is, it's not a massive wall of rain, but you can see a couple hours of heavy rain, and then uh, maybe an hour or two of break, and then another hour or two of heavy rain uh, spreading in across the south. It's all rain at this stage, heavy rain moving into Ireland as well, and more heavy rain heading from the southwest. The next 24 hours, many areas could see maybe 10 millimetres or so, maybe and uh, maybe a little bit more in some localised sp uh, space, especially over Welsh hills, could maybe see an inch or two of, of rain. And there's rain warnings out for the southwest and parts of England and southwestern parts of Wales. But again, it is hill hilly areas, so it's not widespread rain. Uh, rain um, yellow warning. It's for localized spots. So again, most areas are going to see a lot of rain um, on fairly saturated ground. I mean, when we had the colder spell, it it was. For most areas, it was quite dry. Like there was a lot of snow falling in areas, but again, um, that's not a lot. In relative terms, that's not a lot of actual water precipitation. Maybe ten millimeters over the course of a week is not that much precipitation. Whereas we're seeing sort of ten millimeters over the course of a couple, uh, uh, maybe six hours or so. So the ground is a little bit drier than it was a couple of weeks ago, um, but generally it's still pretty saturated as we've had quite a wet winter. So there could be some surface water around some. River flooding as well. Don't expect a massive overflowing rivers at this stage, um, as we as it needs to be a little bit more persistent than this. But it still, could be a little bit of disruption around with this, and it does look like it will be this sort of westerly, rainy, windy pattern for the, for the next few days, uh, at least. Uh, and generally, quite wet and windy in the west, maybe a bit dry in the south and east by the weekend. But just really want to watch that. Make sure you keep up to date with weather forecasts, your apps as well. We'll be all right at this stage. I never recommend apps for snow, but it does give you a general idea of whether it's going to rain uh, and through the rough timings of rain, so you can sort of try and plan your day around that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe new, and I'll see you again for another video tomorrow.